Hello and welcome to another episode of Communication How. In the previous episodes, we have seen the ways of communication, the forms of communication. And in the last episode, we had a look at some of the elements of communication. We debunked certain myths and identified certain facts of human communication. Today, we will be dealing with a much interesting topic, and that is revolution of communication media and its impact on education and especially the field of education. So we see that people's understanding of media has been very different at different point of time. And also with the development of information technology, the connotation of medium is constantly changing. That is to say that with development in technology, there's been various forms of media that has been used and people have also adapted themselves to using these different forms of media. Similarly, we see that in English, the word media, which is the plural form of medium, appeared in the late 19th century or the early 20th century, especially during the second industrial revolution. And because of the rapid progress of science and technology, various kinds of technology related to electricity emerged in large numbers. So we had a lot of gadgets that were there, which were began to be used. And as we know, most of these gadgets run on electric power. So media was used to refer to the medium or tools which could make things happen during that time. And the electronic media basically contained things like slide projectors, movies, radios, televisions, and so on. So probably you all may not know who this person is. Well, this person is none other than Marshall McLuhan. Now, who is Marshall McLuhan? What he is famous for? As you look in the picture, you can see many telephones around and probably you would say that he has to do something with the field of communication or something in the field of technology. Well, when we speak of Marshall McLuhan, he is known as the grandmaster of mass communication technology. Now we see that in the 1960s, the influence of information technology to people increased by leaps and bounds. Now, Marshall McLuhan thought the medium is everything and everything is in the medium. In other words, this means that all media can be related with the human body and the medium is thus the extension of the human body. And we see that with innovation, of science and technology, the spread of media is in constant change. That means as information technology begins to develop, as there is a lot of development in science and technology, new ways of presenting stuff, new ways of communicating comes to the fore. And as a result of this, we see that all this makes it possible in order to speak communicate and also share a lot of information in a variety of manner. With that, we come to the revolution of communication media. Now, human communication activities have basically originated in the need of social production and social life. We all know that man is a social animal and man needs to communicate with one another. He needs to talk. He needs to share things with others. If you place a person without any facilities for communication in a closed room, probably we see that the person will not be able to live normally for a long time. He'll go into a nervous breakdown because we as human beings have the need of people around us. We need to share, we need to talk, and that is what enriches our life. As it is rightly said, no one can live as an island. So we all need others 
to share, communicate, and to be part of our communication circle. Now we see that there's been a lot of communication activities and change in the way human beings communicated ever since human society began. Now the earliest communication of man was with gestures and languages. Now that was a kind of a direct transmission. Now with the enlargement of the scope of human activities, the simple way of direct communication and direct transmission could no longer be applied to meet the needs of human demands. And then we see that indirect transmission with the need to aid other media began to appear. That means there were other forms of indirect transmission which used other forms of mediums that began to be used by human beings in order to transmit information or in order to communicate with one another. So we see that we have also the development of oral communication that is one of the earliest forms of communication. Now we see that with the constant improvement of socialization of human beings, the mode of communication also experienced important stages of development from the earliest forms to the fundamental revolutionary forms in the field of media. Now this revolution is basically the process of socialization as the main line. And therefore we see that each new kind of media as it appeared, the information communication process also increased by leaps and bounds. And thus also it enabled to develop and distribute content to a wide audience and also to a much larger group of people. Now, when we speak about oral communication, first and foremost, what we know is that it is the most primitive form of communication. Now, since humans have language, oral communication became the most important form of communication in human life. And as the scope of human activity expanded gradually, and as socialization began to improve, we see that simple oral communication was no longer capable of spreading the needs of human communication. And as a result of it, we see the invention of writing and the written language. Now, when we speak about written communication, we see that plenty of historical developments right from the earlier times have been recorded in writing. As it is said, from the initial Notting Chronicle to the invention of the Oracle, and then to the bamboo slips or even inscribed wooden slips or cotton silk, the use of the invention of paper making techniques, etc. Everything has been recorded in the form of text right from the simplest inventions to the greatest developments in mankind. All of these have been recorded in the form of text, in the form of writing. And all this became possible because of written communication. Now, we see that they also broke the limit of time and space for the first time in human history. And this provided firsthand valuable information for delivering information and also facilitating development in the literary research. However, there were also certain limitations and this one of the limitations was the handwriting. As we know that as the situation changes and with the passage of time, our handwriting also begins to change. For example, in the examination hall, in the beginning, as we begin to write the first page, our handwriting is quite neat and tidy. But as we reach towards the last page, it becomes wavered and sometimes it's even Ill illegible. It becomes difficult to read it. And here we see that the development of the printing 
and the invention of the printing press was of great importance. And this enabled the spread of human civilization achievements to increase by leaps and bounds. And also the fruits of human civilization could now be spread to a larger audience. That means whatever was written could now be decimated to a larger audience and more people had access to information. And this is considered to be a huge revolution in the educational history. Now, at the same time, we see that there was the second industrial revolution, and this caused a wave of science at the end of the 19th century. Now, with the invention of the camera and the phonograph, slideshow movies became the new media. At the same time, we see that radio and television also emerged almost at the same time. And as a result of this, the communication of humans experienced a historic change again. Now humans were no longer limited to simply reading text. With the emergence of the radio and television, they could hear and see things simultaneously. With the radio, of course, they could hear music, they could listen to the news, etc. With television, they could also see things, what was happening in different parts of the world. And apart from seeing, they could also see and hear at the same time. So this audiovisual technology was very much useful and something, it was something that captivated the people. Also, we see that with this, there were unprecedented physical pictures, sounds and images that were used in communicating the history of people. And as a result of this, the communication of people became more rich and colorful from this point of time. And with more advancements in technologies, life of the people became more easier. And similarly, it became easier to communicate. And also this had its influence when it came in the field of education. So as we know earlier, we had only the normal simple channels on television you had only the national channel then you had the cable tv with then you also had the now we have the digital tv you have the dish tvs and with this we see that there's been a great change in what we could watch earlier people were restricted to watching only certain kind of shows on television but now with introduction of dish tv and also with internet tv you can watch tv shows and channels from different parts of the world and with this we see that with advancements in technology communication has greatly increased by leaps and bounds and as a result of this it has made possible for people to have a new experience of living and experiencing life and also being in connection with people in different parts of the world. Then we have come to the latest chapter in human communication. And this basically includes computer technology, communication technology, multimedia technology, and network technology. And with this, we see that there's been a great improvement in human communication and the way we interact with one another. Also, with regard to delivering content, with delivering information from one part of the world to another has become more easier with the development of all these technologies. For example, we see that the amount of information carried by the new media is far more than that of traditional media. Earlier, when it came, to computer technology, we just had the floppy disks. Then we had the CDs. Then you had pen drives and portable hard disks. Now, with the invention of the cloud, we can pass information from one source or from one country to another in minutes through uploading it on the cloud and sending the link. Earlier, this was not possible. So. As you see that as technology in improves, as technology becomes better, it also facilitates and makes our lives much more easier. Now, it is also said that the information 
was is more diverse and multi-dimensional than ever before if earlier the information was only voice or if it was only letters or alphabets that were written down now we see that with computer technology you can have animations you can have powerpoints you can have a variety host of videos and you can also have plenty of other things which earlier were not possible as a result people can even spread tactile information by using virtual technology and as the internet gradually enters into the life of the people time and distance are no longer an obstacle for communication as a result it is said that the human society is now running into the era of the global village as it is said that the entire world is now shrinking as a result we can communicate with people quickly and more effectively now let us take a look at some of the advantages of the development in communication now we see that in the communication history as a result of the revolution in media the way of human communication has mainly experienced a course which was from direct way of communication to an indirect way so performance of media has been better and this has also led to people using various forms of media in order to communicate what they want to communicate to the others and with the rapid development of information technology people can also choose their communicating way according to their need and as a result people have a variety of choice which they can use in order to communicate so mode of communications therefore have the trend which is from directly to indirectly so this is not just a simple loop of historical process but it is a spiral process that is in the support propagation process by information technology now we can have a look at the impact of communication technology on education so first we see that each revolution of medium change is accompanied by the progress of social productivity and they all reflect the human's appeal which improve for more abundant information content and form of activity now with this we see that the impact of communication technology has had a far reaching influence on education though the invention of media is rarely dedicated to the educational field we see that it has led to a great change especially in the teaching content and also in teaching and learning methods nowadays in the class with the use of variety of mediums things can be taught more effectively and this is also facilitated in learning becoming a more fun a more enjoyable process as a result of it students and teachers can communicate much more concepts in a simple manner and also in an effective manner to one another so before print media it is said that learning was basically by oral visual aids or by handwritten books and we see that all these had their limitations so when it came to oral uh, uh, oral stuff when things were basically just sort of spoken off and you had no way of keeping a track of it things could be lost in translation or things could be lost in the process of writing it down and as a result of it we see that once written communication developed it, there was more accurate information being passed from one source to another but with print media we see that a larger audience could now access the same information and with this we see that with print media more people have access to the same kind of content and this make life of the people students and teachers especially much more easier earlier we see what was used was just the blackboard and the chalk but then there was a great use of other stuff as we can see now we have the smart classrooms which enable the teacher to use powerpoints videos 
and also various diagrams and slides in order to make the concept much more easier and better. Now we see that with the printing and the print media, this was the first revolution in the field of education. And at that time, we see that more production skills were needed to be mastered. So as technology developed, you also needed people to use that technology. And as a result of this, we see that as people needed to be trained, people also needed to be taught. So this was a kind of a circular movement wherein once technology developed, you had to train people to use the technology, which also meant they needed to be educated. And as they were educated, we see that there were more developments in the field of technology, which also made the process of education much more easier and simpler. We also see that with the introduction of print media into the educational process, more students were allowed to learn together. And as a result of it, the specialized teacher appeared. So we had specializations and people were then able to focus on one field and thus make the whole educational process simpler and effective. Then we come to the second revolution in the field of education. And this happened during the second industrial revolution. So we see that electronic media came out and was widely used in education. Now, more and more students could learn by using electronic mediums, especially by slideshows and educational movies. As a result of it, it is said that during late World War I and after the end of World War II, Audiovisual teaching was developed in military and industrial training in the United States. Now, with electronic media, soldiers were trained to join the Navy, the Army and the Air Force. And also ordinary young men and women were trained to manufacture arms and ship technical workers in a very short period of time. And this is said to be one of the most successful cases of media using or media being used in education, which also had been written in the textbooks of educational technology. So with audiovisual teaching, it became much more easier to train people in various fields. For example, now we have the simulators wherein you are able to simulate same situations that could happen. And this has also made things much more safer. For example, pilot training has been introduced in simulators. And as a result of it, since they've already gone through various scenarios in the simulator, they are much more capable of dealing with situations that may take place in real life. So with technology being used in the field of education, we have seen it has led, it has led to train much more competent people and also has facilitated and made the educational process much more simpler and faster. Next, we come to the third educational revolution. And this happened in recent decades after the information technology development. It is said we can use information media to individualize teaching which contain no only individual instruction, but it also contains group instruction. As a result, people can now learn with auditory, vision, olfaction, and so on. So it is said that communication is one of the most important keywords in the study that is supported by information technology. Beyond that, the influence on education by the change in media can be seen in the following three aspects. And now we shall take a look at how media has had an influence on the field of education. So first we see it has led to a change of communicating content. So now we see there's a big capacity of digital information and with more capacity of digital information, it becomes easier to pass on large amounts of data from one 
place to another in a relatively short period of time. Apart from that, the speed of information update is also much faster than the traditional information. And basically, that has been the biggest difference between digital information and traditional analog information. There is also now a vast fresh information in front of the communicators, that is the teachers and the receivers who are the students. However, there's also a drawback. The information authenticity and reliability has decreased with the passage of time. And as we can see now, there's a lot of fake news also that tends to be spread very quickly. Sometimes on WhatsApp, we get plenty of forwards that are not true. And what we need to take into account is before forwarding them, we need to check for their authenticity and reliability. And so we see that technology can be used to spread information quickly, but the drawback or the downside of it is that also a lot of fake news tends to be passed around. Next, we see that there's also been a change of the knowledge acquiring approach. Now, in the traditional form, the approaches of learners to acquire knowledge was mainly from the teachers. Because of the single source of information, the knowledge that learners could get was very limited. In the modern multimedia world, with a lot of networks and diverse information development, we see that information which can be accessed by learners has become wider and better. So people have more access to information and also there are various mediums through which you can access information and use it for better development. At the same time, information is also available in different platforms. So each one can choose according to his convenience and according to his needs. So example, there's also plenty of stuff in print media. At the same time, plenty of uh, stuff also on the audio platforms and the audio visual platforms. As a result, learners now seem to have more rich information sources than the teachers. So we see that if the teachers have not updated their sources, students tend to have better sources and more advanced sources because they have more access to various information platforms and various uh, technologies that enable them to access information much more quickly and accurately. And with this, we also see that there's been a change of the communicating way. So one of the most important revolution of the medium is the change of its interactive function. And as a result of it, one-way communication media has changed to a two-way or a multi-directional communication medium. In this context, educators are no longer merely imparters of knowledge and they are no longer the ones who are the controllers or the authorities of the teaching process. Now, learners also are no longer just passive recipients. They too can contribute. And as we see in modern day classrooms, students are also given opportunities to present several topics. And as a result, there is also a two way process when it comes to the educational field. So all this has basically improved because of the change in communication technology and the way communication technology has been incorporated in the field of education. So with this, we come to an end of the first unit which was basically an introduction to human communication. Next, we shall be dealing with the theories of human communication. And till then, let us focus on communicating effectively and let us also try to be effective communicators by understanding the developments and also the nuances of effective communication. Thank you.